Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to be here with you. Of course, we can't start a Zoom session without someone asking, can you hear me? Am I clear? You're clear, Alex. Am I clear? Thank you. Yes, ma'am, you're clear too. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I'm excited to be here with you for the very first event of the Philosophical Association of the Philippines. And this is World Logic Day. So happy World Logic Day, everyone. It's January 14. So the, the 40th General Conference of UNESCO proclaimed January 14 during 2019 to be World Logic Day. And as a response, uh, PAP launched this event. And this free event is also in partnership with the University of the Philippines Diliman Department of Philosophy. And let me just mention our sponsors. Our sponsors are the following. The Conseil International de Philosophie et de Sciences Humaines, or the CIPSH, the Department of Philosophy, University of the Philippines Diliman, De La Salle University Southeast, Southeast Asian Research Center and Hub, the Estate of Claro R. Seniza, and the Philosophical Association of the Philippines. I would also like to say that those who are watching, oh, let me fix my hair, those who are watching on Facebook can type their questions on the comments and we will try to answer them as best as we can. Okay, so for this event, let us start off with our opening remarks. And to deliver uh, these remarks, we have uh, Dr. Karen Connie Abalos Orendain, the officer in charge chair of the Department of Philosophy, University of the Philippines, Diliman. Good morning, ma'am. Happy World Logic Day, Po. Good morning, Alex and everyone else joining us on Facebook. And to our honored speakers, esteemed lecturers, presenters, and guests, um, I want to welcome everyone today. Our ability to reason is uniquely human. Thus, and I would argue that this is probably one of the few things that analytic and continental philosophers could agree on, celebrating World Logic Day today is not only a celebration of an essential branch of our discipline, it is actually a celebration of our humanity. Thus, when the Executive Council of UNESCO officially proclaimed January 13, as World Logic Day, it's not far-fetched to guess that it was because they saw the necessity of why logic should be celebrated in a world full of inconsistency, conflicts, and untruths. Now, our privileged philosophical circle has never forgotten this. It has never forgotten logic's prime of place. However, as practitioners, philosophers, and philosophy scholars, it may be about time for us to open our rather exclusive discourses to let the utility and everydayness of logic be experienced and lived by others, by everyone. Our society certainly needs it now. So in this regard, I would like to thank the Philosophical Association of the Philippines for their efforts that are obviously in line with this vision. In turn, the University of the Philippines Department of Philosophy reiterates its continuing commitment to these endeavors, beginning with this right shot. So I look forward to learning from our lecturers discussions, and presentations today. Um, thank you to all those who helped, our faculty members, to the members of the Philosophical Association of the Philippines for roping us in in this event. Um, thank you to our students whom, uh, who are actively participating in the lecture, in the right shop today. So again, uh, I look forward to our celebration of World Logic Day today. Maraming marami po salamat sa lahat. Thank you very much, Dr. Casey. And that was nice saying that this is also a, a celebration, a celebration of logic. And uh, for our next part of the program, um, may I call on May I call on uh, Dr. Jeremiah 
Joven Joaquin for the launching of the Claro R. Siniza Logic Prize and the PAP Logic Group. So Dr. JJ is the president of the Philosophical Association of the Philippines. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Alex. Thanks for hosting this event. Uh, on behalf of the PAP, I would like to welcome you to this World Logic Day 2021 Right Shop. Thank you, Ms. Casey, Dr. Casey, for the fabulous reception to our event. And may this be a start of our long-standing relationship with the PAP and UPT. Now here, I'll discuss the Siniza Logic Prize, and we will formally launch as well the PAP Logic Group. Just some background. So Claudio Arseniza is arguably one of the best philosophers and logicians that the country has produced. He was born in Cebu in 1927, and we are celebrating as well his 20th death anniversary this year. Now, he has worked on logic, specifically modal logic, probability logic, conditional logic throughout his career. And he is, I think, well known for his metaphysical views as well. Now, we are privileged to have the family of Dr. Zeniza here with us in our uh, event. Now, I will formally launch the 2021 Zeniza Logic Prize, the Claro R. Zeniza Logic Prize. So the PAP, through the generosity of the estate of Claro R. Zeniza, will award a monetary prize for the best paper presented in the World Logic Day Right Shop. So all the paper presenters today, the right shoppers as I call them, the seven of them are part of the pool of candidates for this award. Now this annual prize is offered to encourage Filipino scholars to produce quality research in any area of logic. Now, the criteria that we have set for the best paper will be originality, that is the novelty of the work. Does it contribute to the existing literature or does it open a new literature in logic? Of course, we are also checking for the overall scholarly merit, that is, is it well written? Is it well argued? Is the impact of it? Uh, well, you can experience the impact of it in the literature as well. So those are the three criteria that we'll be using in assessing the best paper for this world logic right shop. After the right shop, the paper presenters are given a month to develop their full-blown papers. So by February 15, they have to submit their penultimate draft and then we will announce the winner by March in the world uh, sorry the women's month event of the PAP. Now that's the Sinisa award. Thank you again to the estate of Claro R. Sinisa for this gener generous award. Now I will formally launch as well the PAP logic group. Now it's been a long time since the PAP has no, endeavored in dealing with logical matters. Hi, Sir Gerald. Hi. <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay. Uh, so the logic group. So the goal of the PAP logic group is to promote excellent research in various areas in logic. Specifically, we're targeting the history of logic, philosophical logic, pure and applied logic, and of course, logic education, and all matters, logic. Now, as uh, some of the activities envisioned by the group is to promote in promoting logic education is through webinars, such as this one and write shops. Uh, we're also thinking about logic tutorials via vlogs and wiki pages. And of course, international collaborative projects like what we'll have today. Now, if you are interested in joining this, please email me at my Lasala Hunt. That's the email. And we will formally organize ourselves by the end of the month. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Dr. JJ. Okay, I hope a lot of you guys will join the PAP Logic Group. Um, and wouldn't it be nice if during World Logic Day, everyone would be a little bit more logical? Maybe things would be better for all of us. Okay, so, so that's uh, the discussion of the Claro R. Sinisa Prize. Thank you again to the estate and also the, the formation of the PAP Logic Group. Okay. And we are we in UP Diliman are very uh, very glad as well to be part of this, especially with regards to logic education. Okay, now uh, let's go on to the next part of our program. Okay, I'm excited to hear what our speakers will say about logic education in the Philippines. So this is going to be a roundtable discussion facilitated by Dr. JJ of PAP. And uh, let me just introduce the our participants in the roundtable discussion. Okay, so um, our first participant is uh, Dr. Alma Espartinez. And Alma Espartinez is a faculty member of De La Salle College of St. Benilde and the Ecclesiastical Faculty of the University of Santo Tomas. She's a graduate of AB Philosophy at the University of Santo Tomas, Manila. She finished her MA Philosophy and PhD in Philosophy at the same university. Alma served as the Vice President for Academic Affairs at the biggest university in Central Luzon in 2016 to 2019. She is a Fulbright Scholar in Residence Awardee in 2010 to 11, where she taught ethics and philosophy of the human person at the Dominican University of California for one year and delivered 23 lectures in 10 different states in the U.S. Okay, in the, yes, in the U.S. within her Fulbright stint. She's the author of a number of books and articles, and she wrote materials on critical thinking, philosophy of the human person, and ethics. She also wrote some articles on Carol Wojtyła, Emmanuel Levinas, ethical le leadership, and transhumanism. In 2017, she was chosen as the Commission on Higher Education, Canadian Bureau of International Education, Fellow or the CHED CBIE, who visited some top notch Canadian universities for internationalization initiatives of Philippine higher education institutes. Okay, and we also have another discussant for our RTD, and this one is Sir Gerald P.O.M. Franco. He is currently an assistant professor in UP Diliman, and he finished his BA and MA in philosophy in the said institution. He teaches courses in logic, intermediate logic, mathematical logic, modal logic, and philosophy of logic in UP Diliman. He was the former director of the UP Office of Admissions. Again, I would just like to remind everyone that uh, over on Facebook that you can type your questions on the chat. And yes, we will forward them to our speakers. So let me now turn you over to Dr. JJ. Thank you, Alex. Okay, so we will start our roundtable discussions on logic education in the Philippines. May I ask Doc Alma and Sir Gerald to open their cameras so that we could start the discussion. Oh, by the way, just a personal note, Sir Gerald was my teacher in modal logic, philosophy of mathematics, and a lot of logic courses that I took from the University of the Philippines, Teleman. Mom Alma is my boss, former boss at St. Scholastica's College. Hello, Mom Alma. Hi, JJ. Hello. Sir Gerald, are you here? Okay, so before we start our discussions on logic, uh, logic education in the Philippines. I would like to ask you your philosophical background first. So, Mom Alma, how did you get into philosophy? Um, well, I started uh, doing philosophy since 1980, you know, and I um, majored in philosophy at UST. And then I immediately after that, I took up my MA and then my PhD, and there are several professors that uh, intrigued me, and that was the reason why somehow I really loved philosophy. I always say that philosophy is my first love, because since then up to now, I'm still doing philosophy. 
Yeah, thanks. But how do you get into logic? Ah, okay. Um, well, I remember just um, a little story about my interest in logic. No? When I had my logic first year, first semester at UST, I remembered I failed in the midterm part of the subject. Almost all of us failed, and I said I cannot afford to tell this to my parents because definitely they, they, they'll get upset. And so that was my first experience of logic. And then our professor told us that, well, uh, if you want to challenge me, you just get a good grade in the final exam. I think I remember if you perfect the exam, I'll give you a 1.0. Of course, that was too difficult for sure. Okay, but then to cut the story short, uh, we made it, and then that started my interest in logic. Actually, my first assignment when I started teaching was logic. And since then up to now, I've been teaching the subject. How about you, Sir Gerald? What's your philosophical background? How did you get into philosophy? Uh, well, uh, of course, I started uh, my uh, university studies at the University of the Philippines. Uh, actually, uh, when I was still in high school, I took uh, only two admission tests. Uh, I live in the province, you know, and uh, I took the test in UP and uh, also in UST. And I was admitted in both uh, universities under the BA philosophy program. Uh, but then uh, I decided uh, to take uh, uh, a BA philosophy in UP during that time primarily because it was cheaper to study in UP. <laughs> Uh, so uh, uh, I took BA philosophy, and then uh, after that, uh, well, when I graduated, I started teaching uh, and continued my studies. Uh, I took up an MA uh, in philosophy, and uh, my interest in logic. Uh, uh, well, uh, you might say, you know, that uh, I became interested in logic because I was also interested very much in mathematics. Mathematics was one of my options also, but uh, I decided uh, to take up philosophy because, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it encompasses more uh, uh, mat uh, subjects than uh, uh, mathematics. Okay, so uh, logic has been one of the, the core courses in Philippine education. But before we get into the education part, what is logic for you guys? So let's start with Sir Gerald. Well, logic, you know, since uh, uh, this is about uh, logic education in the Philippines, you know, we can start with the textbook uh, uh, definition of logic. Uh, and uh, uh, in my logic courses, and I can see that a lot of uh, the participants here have been my students, you know, in, in logic. Uh, I start you know, with the textbook definition of logic as basically the analysis, uh, the criticism of uh, reasoning or argument. You know? uh, and uh, as a form of analysis, it is uh, both an art and a science. You know? And I think that uh, when we teach logic, uh, we, all, we, all, we always uh, present it in that way uh, as an art and at the same time as a scientific discipline. Uh, but uh, we need to understand you know, that uh, logic is, uh, the, 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 the concept of logic is itself a philosophical problem. Uh, so that therefore uh, we are, we, we can, we can uh, revise this particular textbook definition of logic. Uh, and uh, my uh, preference really is to uh, think of logic in terms more of the analysis of sentences rather than of uh, arguments. Uh, and uh, that way, uh, it is, we are able to cover more, uh, more areas, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the logic, therefore, as the analysis of sentences, you know. And uh, I always go back, you know, to uh, the origins of logic to the time of the ancient Greek philosophers, uh, particularly Plato and Aristotle. And uh, logic uh, comes from uh, the analytics of Aristotle. It also comes from the dialectic of Plato. Uh, well, we can go back as far as uh, Parmenides, who is sometimes also recognized as the founder, father of logic, father Parmenides. So dialectic and analytics, you know, so uh, uh, the combination of the two. 
no? And uh, perhaps uh, by focusing on uh, sentences uh, rather than uh, on arguments, you know, we are able to unify you know, all these ideas uh, that we find you know, uh, in ancient Greek philosophy about logic mm -hmm. uh, and subsequently in medieval philosophy and also in contemporary philosophy, symbolic logic. Uh, yeah, no, so that, that's interesting. Yeah, Sir Gerald, that's interesting because most textbooks, as you have said, concentrate on the idea of logic as the analysis of arguments. So what you're proposing, at least in your in what you have said, is that it's not only the analysis of arguments, but the sentences contained in the arguments. Is that the? Uh, well, it's also uh, it's also a basic theorem in logic, you know, that uh, all argument forms are reducible to sentential forms. Right. Right. Uh, so that therefore uh, uh, the the analysis of sentences would therefore be much more in uh, more encompassing uh, than that of arguments, you know. Right. And uh, perhaps uh, we would be able to understand better uh, the flow of the dialectic if we think of it in terms of uh, uh, discourse made up of sentences uh, mm -hmm. rather than uh, uh, just plain arguments. Plain arguments. Right. Yeah, premises leading to conclusion. How about you, Mom Alma? So what is logic for you? Yeah, thanks, JJ. No? Um, there's not only one true logic. Mm -hmm. And there's no single formalization that will stand as the logic of all thought and uh, discourses. Uh, there are as many tools for cutting jobs, like we use knife, blade, axe, as there are many tools for reasoning. And as there is not only one logic, there is likewise not only one definition of logic. A great variety of logical systems we know exists, and uh, there are areas of overlap, and these logical systems historically and up to now have modified other systems. We know that, sometimes complementing, often competing, at best improving, at worst excluding one another. And my definition of logic is nurtured by the many years logic has guided me in my philosophizing. So I define logic as a formal theory of reasoning with precision and elegance. And you know, there's sophistication and beauty in the process of reasoning that addresses theoretical questions concerning what is the issue, what is the problem, as well as practical questions concerning both what ought to be done and what is a sound argument. In one word, I say it's reasonableness. So logic is the reasonableness of one's thought or action. Now, historically, we can say uh, there are Aristotelian logic, but the, 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 the traditional, propositional, and then the predicate logic. But pedagogically, uh, we would have formal or informal logic. So, uh, I am more trained in the traditional, although when I taught in the seminary, I began teaching the propositional logic and a part of the uh, predicate logic. Uh, while Gerald's uh, discipline is mathematics, mine is really the traditional one. Also, uh, my concentration is on that one. Uh, regarding formal logic and informal logic, they say that uh, formal logic is the real logic and informal logic is not a true logic because it's more on semantics. No? But I think that there can be an interplay between formal logic and informal logic. And historically, we can still um, do the traditional and then the propositional and the predicate logic. No, let's think about traditional logic here. So are we talking about the Aristotelian syllogistic logic when you talk about when we talk about traditional logic? Actually, there's a misnomer there, no? Uh, they say that there's no such thing as Aristotelian logic. It's it's just Aristotle's logic. Mm -hmm. Because much of Aristotle's logic were improved by Chrysippus, by the Stoics by the philosophers uh, after Aristotle. So there are lots of revisions already in the Aristotle's logic. That's why they say that it's better that we call it Aristotle's logic than Aristotelian. But of course, we're used to calling it Aristotelian or the traditional. The traditional 
I think even covers now the proposition logic. Mm -hmm. That's why when I say traditional, it just doesn't cover Aristotle. It covers even the improvement done in the mid 15th, 16th century, and even the 19th century. Okay, let's go into uh, our main topic, that is logic, education, in the Philippines. So what is, how do we teach logic now here in our country? Let's start with uh, Sir Gerald. Uh, well, of course, uh, I, I go back you know, to uh, my contention uh, that uh, uh, perhaps uh, we should be concentrating more on the analysis of propositions uh, rather than the analysis of arguments. Uh, well, of course, I agree you know, that uh, 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 there, there is this, uh, uh, this uh, distinction you know, between uh, traditional logic you know, and uh, modern logic. Uh, they can easily be incorporated, of course. You know, when, when we teach logic. And uh, that's, uh, I believe, I, how I uh, usually teach it. Uh, and uh, this, is, this can be attested to by a lot of the participants here. You know? A combination of uh, uh, propositional logic uh, and predicate logic, both of which are traditional, you know, because uh, propositional logic came from the Stoics, Christus and the likes. You know? uh, and, uh, but I also go back you know, to uh, Aristotle you know, and uh, the last... Uh, just last semester, you know, the uh, course that I taught you know, uh, focused more on uh, Aristotle's uh, prior analytics. Uh, uh, I, I want to go back to that, you know, and uh, 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 going back to Aristotle, you know, we, we, we find uh, uh, not only the theory of syllogisms, you know, but also uh, the use of uh, basic modes of reasoning, uh, improving you know, the syllogisms, you know, like uh, uh, what the, the, the argument that we call the reductio ad absurdum argument, that's what we call it now, no? reduction to absurdity. Of course, it's a mode of reasoning that is used by mathematicians, no? uh, also what we call indirect proof. No? And uh, uh, this uh, agrees you know, with my contention you know, that maybe uh, we should be focusing more on arguments because then uh, the, the, the focus of logic will be more on uh, consistency. Uh, logic as the consistency of beliefs. No, uh, and of course that will touch also on the, the ethics of thinking. No, uh -huh. because you might say you know that there is that uh, consistency imperative. Whenever we think, uh, we try our best you know, to be consistent. And when somebody is stating something that is uh, contradictory, then we need to correct that, or at least we need to initiate a discussion. Mm -hmm. No, uh, so uh, it's more on the consistency of beliefs. You no, know? uh, and we find that in Aristotle. Uh, uh, in his use of, uh, well, the reductio ad absurdum argument. And that goes back to the dialectic. Mm -hmm. you know? So, yes, you know, maybe we have, uh, uh, we, we focus more on uh, formal techniques, uh, especially in UP. Uh, we focus more on uh, uh, the uh, systems of logic, uh, formal logic, you know. But yes, these are tools, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that we use for, well, uh, as I put it also, cutting up things, you know, uh, because uh, dialectic uh, in the uh, platonic sense is basically cutting up things along their natural joints. joints you know? <laughs> uh, basically cutting up things, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, natural joints, you know. So we can like a butcher, you know, who knows how to cut up reality along its uh, natural joints, you know. Mm -hmm. And that means cutting up sentences, you know. So how do we cut up sentences? No? So uh, that is uh, uh, also my uh, uh, focus in uh, teaching logic. How do we cut up sentences? Uh, mm -hmm. There are complex sentences. And when we cut up complex sentences, then we have propositional logic. Mm -hmm. And when we cut up simple sentences, then we have predicate relational logic. Mm -hmm. no? So it's basically cutting up. No? Uh, and by uh, cutting up in this way, uh, we are able to go back also to that uh, Original sense, I think, of logic uh, as uh, dialectic. No, so uh, we need to keep that in mind. You know, when 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 we teach logic, it's not just maybe techniques, not just systems of uh, uh, logic. No, laws. No, that we, use for, that we can use for uh, making deductions, inferences, constructing mm -hmm. arguments. You know, but 
also uh, determining the consistency of uh, our reliefs, you know, and uh, uh, this is so that we can continue our analysis, our discussions. Dialectic is in, 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 in the traditional sense, uh, a continuous discussion you know, mm. uh, of ideas. It's more of the exchange of ideas. Yes, dialogue. Exchange. That's yeah. why it's expressed as a dialogue, you know, mm. in uh, Plato. Uh, platonic dialogues, it's uh, discussion starting with definitions, you know, in an exchange of ideas. And by in that way, we are able to clarify our thoughts, mm -hmm. our concepts. And we are able to arrive at uh, better definitions, better conceptions of things, you know. Uh, so uh, cultivating that, no, and I think that is something that uh, is missing uh, <laughs> in logic people, education uh, here. Uh, only education, political discourse, and the likes, you know. Uh -huh. Okay, how about? We need to inculcate that, I guess, uh, in the students, you no, know, right. uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, logic is uh, continuous discussion. No, uh, philosophy mm -hmm. is a, an examination of our beliefs. Uh, Self-examination. Right. So, how about you, Mam Alma? How, how do you teach logic, and what is logic education for you? Okay. Um, if I may say this, no, uh, traditional logic reigns supreme for over many decades in the Philippine education. Philippine general education. And in some universities or most universities, when you ask them, what kind of logic are you having? Uh, what kind of logic are you teaching? Most universities would still teach the traditional logic. Uh, for other universities like UP, I think uh, they're more an analytical uh, philosophy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, basically most of universities would still do the traditional logic. And I think that kind of trend uh, mimics the initial search of interest in Aristotelian logic no? um, in prior analytics and in categories. Uh, now, there's the waning of interest in favor of a new logic, uh, the symbolic logic. Uh, it gained influence in and support from the Philippine uh, universities in the early 90s, largely because perhaps uh, that's my opinion, no? the, there is the surging of the professional courses such as engineering, computer science, computing, and other mathematics related uh, courses. And so a lot of colleges still have curricula that would chase after what they think most business want and what would be the next hot major. So when there's the surging of elect of engineering courses, ah, let's teach uh, symbolic logic, propositional logic, predicate logic. And then in a blink of an eye, when Chad Memo number 20 was released to be implemented in 2018, logic was surprisingly dislodged. <laughs> now you see it, now you don't. And it's gone without clear uh, explanation. So that's the kind of uh, logic education that we have now. Uh, logic has been dislodged in the general education curriculum. Mm. And so my take on that is that to remove logic in the curriculum as a must take uh, first year class is a big academic faux pas. Uh, it is like removing one's exoskeleton because I think logic is a foundational discipline. Huh? And as Chad removed from the general education logic or critical thinking, which has been its mainstay for decades, the general um, education offering has been streamlined to 18 core subjects. Although it's it's beautiful to know that there are still universities who retained logic in the form of uh, creative and critical thinking. And one uh, college is uh, the college where I am in now, uh, the College of St. Benil that teaches um, critical and creative um, thinking under the leadership of our chair, uh, Professor Gonzalez. And so that's beautiful because at least uh, it's, it becomes an institutional requirement because we cannot do away with logic, whatever form it may be. You may do it like critical, doing the formal proof of validity or creative, like using different law, law, um, models of argumentation, as long as you teach them how to be logical. 
And one thing that is important because I see here from one of the questions in the chat now that we have to make sense of what we teach, no? the kind of logic that we teach, that it should be something that is valuable to our students, so something that can actually help them. And I think that's a kind of logic education that we have to have in our country. Yeah, thanks, Mom Alma. But you touched on a very important point. So since the 2018, 2016, the new curriculum tells us that we don't need logic in college anymore. But that's before, what they say. <laughs> but before that, uh, we have logic courses as part of the curriculum across the board. So anyone who's in the university you need to have logic. But let's get get into that the history a bit. So early on, about the early 1900s, when academic or university life was being established, we have logic as part of the curriculum. This is the part of the Spanish heritage, perhaps. What do you think? Is it part of the, the Catholic training? Because you have medieval thinking that you have logic, rhetoric, dialectic as part of the curriculum. Is that the case here in the Philippines? That's why we have logic then? I'm not really sure of that, why we have logic, because sometimes it's not really called logic, but simply critical thinking. No? Uh, maybe back then, uh, uh, when I think it's more on professional education, eh? because even in the early 1950s, 1940s, they would concentrate on professional education. Uh, so it depends on the kind of uh, professional course that you have, and uh, it's, if it's more mathematically related, so they would say that there really is a need for logic because somehow they equate logic with mathematics. And for, for us, we know, anyway, that logic, is not mathematics. Logic is concerned with mathematics, but professional courses back then were uh, generally mathematics oriented, and so perhaps they saw the need that there should really be logic. Okay, so we have viewers from Marawi, hello, and Pangasinan, and from other parts of the Philippines, we have Ecija. And we have students from UST and UP watching you guys, your students, on FB. Sir Gerald, just give us a background of logic in UP because we have we heard stories that UP is the home of logic here in the Philippines. But what is how did your teachers teach logic way way back? Well, uh, uh, maybe a, a specific style of doing logic, you know, uh, more than anything else, you know, uh, and. Uh, that's because the of uh, because the analytic tradition has uh, uh, well uh, uh, been in place in UP for quite some time. You know? uh, uh, I think this goes back you know, to the time of uh, Dr. Pasqual, Ricardo Pasqual, uh, who, uh, uh, according to stories, was a friend of Bertrand Russell uh, and was a student of Bertrand Russell. And so when he came back, he wrote a book in, on logic patterned after the Principia Mathematica of uh, Bertrand Russell and Alfred North Whitehead. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, and I think that started the tradition. Uh, so uh, we have uh, mathematical logic uh, in, in UP. And apart from that, of course, we have uh, modal logic and all these other types of uh, formal logic. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, we, we did modal logic together. Uh, yes. We extended that. <laughs> to the philosophy of mathematics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so that's uh, how uh, we have been uh, teaching uh, logic you know, in UP, at least that's uh, the tradition. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, it, uh, I, I try to, uh, uh, I try to uh, uh, show the relevance of logic uh, to uh, uh, the students. You know? uh, I, I saw that uh, in one of the comments there, you know, that the students need to see the relevance of logic in their daily lives. You know? Mm. I think uh, what we need uh, for the students to do is to examine themselves, you know, to examine their own beliefs, you know, because uh, I think uh, if you are able to philosophize or think deeply enough, uh, you will be able to see, you know, the uh, importance of logic to your thinking. You know? mm -hmm. So like in my introductory courses in uh, logic, I start with uh, 
uh, logic puzzles, for example. Uh, maybe not uh, many are fond of uh, logic puzzles. You know, <laughs> but, uh, I try to show you know, how such uh, problems you know, can be solved by even the most basic uh, principles that we use in logic, like, uh, well, uh, disjunctive syllogism, mm -hmm. uh, modus tollens, you know. Uh, so if we think deeply enough, then we will be able to see uh, these principles operating in the way we think. Disjunctive syllogism is basically reasoning by elimination. Right. And then modus tollens, that's what we use, you know, when we dis disconfirm something, whether it be a scientific theory or an assumption, you know? mm -hmm. So you make uh, you make uh, predictions on the basis of that, you know, and then if the prediction turns out wrong, then that means that your initial assumption or your theory is wrong. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, we can we can see you know uh, these uh, principles of logic uh, operating in the way we think, you know, and sometimes I think uh, we only need to uh, uh, show students you know to how to think uh, deeply enough about. Uh, uh, well, their own ideas, and they will see, you know, these uh, principles at work, you know. So these are formal principles, you know. Uh, and at the same time, you know, uh, uh, maybe uh, one way of showing the relevance of logic is to uh, show its connection, uh, not only to arguments, you know. Uh, uh, well, maybe uh, uh, I just uh, need, uh, I just add this comment, I know that maybe uh, the reason why uh, our leaders uh, <laughs> our educational leaders, political leaders, and the mm -hmm. likes, you know, are not fond of logic is because uh, they are not really fond of discussions, you know, they are not fond of uh, criticism, you know, critical thinking, and the likes, you know, uh, 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 and uh, also because perhaps, you know, the, the thinking is that logic is primarily about argumentation. They, they don't mm -hmm. like arguments, you know, when you are, usually our leaders, so they don't want discussions, you know, uh, They've already made their decisions and they don't want to, uh, to entertain any. Uh, <laughs> That's a good observation. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, uh, there is no room for critical thinking, you know. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I go back you know, to that concern with uh, consistency. Mm -hmm. So it's not just uh, about, uh, well, uh, arguments. Uh, perhaps we also need to show you know, the connection of logic, the importance of logic uh, to com computability. Uh, com mm -hmm. computer, uh, computing technology, computing theory, uh, artificial intelligence, you know, and if I'm not mistaken, that's uh, uh, the prime motivation, you know, for establishing uh, a, a world logic day, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I I looked at the web page, you know, and uh, it start this started last year, you know, and uh, uh, actually two years ago during this yeah. day, you know, because. Uh -huh. uh, of uh, the importance of Kurt Gidel and Alfred Tarski. Right, uh, right. But why are they important? No, uh, uh, are they important because of their analysis of arguments? No. So uh, logic is much more than that. No. So perhaps we need to uh, show to students also how uh, logic uh, produced, no, computers mm -hmm. uh, in the first place. No. Uh, so uh, and therefore the internet. And therefore, uh, artificial intelligence. No, so uh, uh, that's one part of it. No, uh, it's not just about argumentation. It's not just about the analysis of uh, statements. No, uh, maybe we also need to have uh, uh, something like uh, an appreciation part in logic. Logic appreciation. What yeah. is the importance of logic uh, right. uh, in our daily lives? No. What is the importance of logic in the development of, uh, well, the technologies that we can live without nowadays, you know? Uh, so uh, I think a lot of students uh, still cannot see that connection. And maybe sometimes, uh, yeah, uh, speaking from experience, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to mention any specific uh, person. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, because I had a teacher before, you know, who uh, mentioned, you know, that, uh, uh, he or she has been teaching uh, logic for a long time, but still can see uh, the uh, relevance of uh, the rules of inference. And mm -hmm. like that, you know? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, uh, uh, apart from that, I you know we I think uh, need you know, to show the uh, uh, relevance of logic, you know, mm -hmm. not only to argumentation, uh, criticism, but also the development of, as I've said, you know, uh, computer computing technology. And perhaps, you know, uh, that way we are also able at the same time to 
uh, take control of these technologies. You know, mm -hmm. Because, uh, I mean, uh, if we just uh, let these technologies uh, uh, develop, uh, maybe without our uh, contributions, you know, then uh, uh, eventually uh, they will be able to take control of our lives. You know? I think that's already happening with social media and the likes. You know? uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. something like uh, the uh, uh, a logic appreciation uh, course. You know? Perhaps so you could have that again, not, right? Not, not a different course, but uh -huh. uh, as part uh, of, of, of uh, the logic course, uh, courses that we teach. Oh, by the way, we have viewers from Iloilo, Isabella, Agusan, and Naga. So, hello, guys. Let's go back to Doc Alma's point about the, the, the CHED memorandum regarding logic. First, let's speculate. What was the justification for letting go of logic? I think they want logic to permeate all courses without having a standalone uh, subject, which is logic. So since they want to streamline the GE program, they deleted um, logic or critical thinking because they would say all professors would be teaching logical thinking anyway, so there's no need for a logic as a course. But I think that was, uh, as I said, a major faux pas. Sorry for the Chad people who might be watching. Uh, yeah, some said <laughs> because I think that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because there should really be a standalone uh, course, whatever kind of logic it may be, be it traditional or propositional or predicate. That's why I think that our team is very good here now because uh, Dr. Gerald is focused on the mathematics. I am on the semantic uh, side of logic. And so it depends, but to remove it, Mm -hmm. To exclude it in the GE curriculum, I think that is really uh, a, a major error in the um, uh, in the uh, general education curriculum. Mm -hmm. And if I may also say, Nona, um, I, I'm not really sure if I am entitled to any option at all about what sort of logic uh, should be taught and how. But I can say, Nona, a cook may be a good cook but maybe awful at teaching people how to cook. <laughs> uh, because uh, applying it to logic, it's one thing to do logic, and it's another thing to teach logic. Mm. Okay, whatever uh, kind of logic it is. No? And I think, no, um, uh, I, I suggest that our approach uh, should be both substantive and pedagogical pedagogical in the sense that we know logic, that will be our framework, but we, sh we should not set aside the substance, uh, the, the, the discipline. While we do justification of our arguments, like applying uh, the laws of inference to a broad base of judgment in an adequately informed uh, perspective, I think we cannot afford to set aside the substantive disciplinary base that is pertinent to that subject matter. Because I think that logic without substance or substantive content is empty and substantive uh, content without logic, without framework would also be blind. Um, say for example, if a logic professor applies the formal proof of validity um, to real life situations, uh, say police brutality in the Philippines um, and knows little about police brutality in the Philippines, that logic professor will be left with a thin and perhaps misleading analysis because students would still want that logic be relevant. No? Or if a logic professor will do analogical reasoning by determining whether or not the US president and the Philippine president are relevantly similar, uh, the logic professor may not know enough historical and political facts to really judge the strength of the inductive analogy. That professor could only give a very shallow analysis of the argument at hand for these topics would require, apart from the pedagogical reasoning, substantive analysis of the issue. My point is, we cannot simply say, well, if A, then B, A, therefore B. 
we cannot simply do modus ponens here. There should really be an interplay of the substance and pedagogy. Mm, I, li I like that point about we need to think about the substance of our argument as well, not just concerned about the validity of things. Now, uh, here's another question that uh, before we get into the my question, for those who, guys who have questions, please uh, put them in the Q&A box and we will entertain them after the discussion. For those who are viewing us on FB, please, uh, if you have a question, just write them in the chat and we will try to answer them as well. Now, let's go to improvements. We're touching on some of your suggestions on how to improve logic education here in the Philippines. But let's be more specific. So what's the what's the idea here? How do we improve logic education in our country? Let's start with Mama Alma. Bring back logic in the curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> That's simple. <laughs> and I think um, if there will be a revision of the G curriculum, I think our organization must be in the front, front, uh, 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 forefront, no, uh, to fight for the inclusion of whatever form of logic uh, uh, it may be, no. Uh, and I think no, um, I th for for the non philo majors uh, that. Uh, subjects are not uh, mathematically oriented, uh, perhaps we can do the basic one, no? uh, the traditional, but for those that are mathemat or, or, or um, logic in the seminary should also include the um, higher form of the formal proof of validity in the graduate school. But I think for an institutional requirement, I think there should really be this uh, logic. Perhaps we may not call it really logic, no? perhaps we may call it critical and creative because there should really be an interplay of this creative and critical. Um, usually we associate logic with the critical thinking, but perhaps we might be uh, relegating to the side the creative part, which our students might also be needing. So. Uh, I think a little uh, creativity in conceptualizing logic to make it more relevant to our students because they might say, well, we just add three units. And I remember, if I may say this, I remember when I taught uh, symbolic seminarians in one seminary in Quezon City. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they asked me, Miss, uh, you're, asking, you're asking us to... Uh, give us the formal proof of validity, justify the formal proof of validity. And then they asked me, Miss, if we are already priests, would we be using this formal proof of validity? What relevance would this be when we are already changing uh, the bread into the body of Christ and the wine into the blood of you know? And it may not be perhaps bad teaching of logic, but perhaps our students should see really the relevance of why we are teaching what we are teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think if only we make sense of that, they would see its relevance as, as well. Okay, thanks, Ma'am Alma. Uh, we have viewers from Iligan, Cebu, Buhol, and Bulacan right now. How about Sir Gerald? Uh, how do we improve logic education in the Philippines? Well, I, I agree with uh, Mom Alma no, that uh, logic uh, should be uh, uh, reintroduced no, into uh, the curriculum. Uh, uh, but at the same time, you know, we need to highlight one particular aspect of, of logic. You know, that uh, uh, not only does it teach us how to think, but it also teaches us how to think about thinking. You no, know? it's a form of thinking uh, about thinking itself. You no, know? it's self-reflection, as it were. Uh, I think uh, uh, the thinking is that, uh, well, in the other courses, you know, uh, students anyway learn how to think logically, but that's different. You know? In mathematics, yes, you learn how to think uh, logically, uh, but uh, there is no self-examination. Uh, uh, in mathematics, you learn about uh, uh, systems of mathematics, you know, and so therefore you learn how to think in a specific way. Uh, uh, but uh, in logic, you know, we are taught how to analyze, you know, 
the way we think. You know? uh, so I think that is something that is not uh, uh, that cannot be found you know, in the other courses that uh, supposedly teach us how to think. Uh, that is what is needed, you know. And I think going back, I go back you know, to that uh, idea of the uh, dialectics, you know, uh, uh, because it is uh, an examination of our beliefs, an examination of thinking. You know? uh, so we are not just simply thinking there, you know, but thinking about the way we think. You know? And uh, so if you were to ask me how to improve you know, logic education, well, that's one, you know, highlighting that particular aspect of logic. Uh, uh, not just the analysis of arguments, as I said earlier, but uh, the analysis of propositions, you know, the uh, uh, concern with uh, consistency, you know, and therefore it, 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 uh, it also points to an ethical aspect of it. You know? uh, there is an as ethical aspect to thinking uh, that we need to be consistent you know, when it comes to thinking about things. You know? uh, uh, so, uh, maybe just uh, uh, to mention something about uh, what uh, uh, Ma'am uh, Ma Ma Alma is saying you know, about the Greeks. You know, <laughs> you know, maybe uh, uh, it's, it's really more about consistency. You know? uh, I, mean, I, I think you know, uh, uh, when they, they think about uh, Jesus Christ you know, and the nice, you know, I, I think there is still that concern with uh, consistency, you know? mm -hmm. which is, of course, uh, uh, reflected in uh, the way we do formal groups you know? uh, and, and things like that. At any rate, no. Uh, so, if you ask me how to improve the way we teach logic, underscoring uh, that important aspect of logic as uh, reflective, mm -hmm. uh, thinking about thinking, expanding its concern not only from our, uh, with arguments but also with sentences, and also uh, what I said about the appreciation, no? uh, uh, learning about the significance of logic uh, to. Uh, uh, our uh, modern life, contemporary life, particularly its connection with computers, you know? and uh, maybe its history. Uh, uh, sometimes when we teach uh, a course like logic as a science, uh, we tend to forget uh, its history. You know? mm -hmm. uh, of course, that's what uh, the philosophers of science, like Thomas Kuhn, uh, are saying. You know, uh, we don't teach history of, of science. You know. Uh, uh, to, uh, to scientists, you know, but I guess in logic, there is a need, you know, to uh, keep on going back, you know, to the history, history of the subject matter, you know, uh, and that's why I also go back, you know, to Aristotle, you know, and the ancient Greek philosophers, you know. Uh, so we need to uh, uh, highlight that particular aspect also of logic, logic as a philosophical discipline, and therefore uh, the history of logic can also uh, have an important contribution towards our understanding of logic and therefore the significance also of the techniques you know, uh, that we teach in logic. You know? mm -hmm. So it is uh, by consulting the history of logic uh, that, for example, I think we can find the most important role of logic in world affairs. As uh, I tell my students, you know, we find in Leibniz the belief you know, that the key to world peace is logic. <laughs> because after everything that's said and done, we could just sit down and tabulate, right? Because we yeah. formalize everything. <laughs> okay. So I'll, 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 I'll or, go to war, so no, but uh, let's just have a dialogue. Calculate. <laughs> Dr. JJ? Yes. Um, is it okay if we raise the volume because I'm having a difficulty uh, listening to uh, Dr. Gerald? Uh, perhaps you can increase the volume? Because there's also, yeah, there's also uh, the question here. If we may, uh, I, I cannot hear the well the uh, the content of of uh, what Dr. Gerald is saying because of the low volume. Okay, so Gerald, please uh, increase your volume. Yes, I'll try to address that. I hope uh, uh, just uh, yeah, just remind okay. me. You know, uh, so I hope that it's okay now. It's okay now. Thanks. Okay, so before we get into the questions, because there are some questions already uh, coming in from Facebook, for you guys as well, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A box. Or if you want to join the discussion, please raise your hand and we will give you access to the, to the discussion. Okay, so before getting into that, uh, finally, 
if you are planning a syllabus on logic, what would be the content of that syllabus? Ma'am Alma. I, I would have a bias, of course. Oh, that's um, all right. <laughs> yeah, I would have a bias. I, I would really follow the uh, current uh, kind of thinking that we're doing here in our in our college, no? uh, again, in College of St. Benilde. Okay. Uh, that's a free advertisement and promotion. Okay. So what we're doing there is we're doing both creative and critical thinking. And that's that's still logic because there's still the formal proof of validity. That's why, again, listening to some of the questions here, now that uh, most students would really want uh, material logic rather than formal logic. But I think there should really be an interplay of both because we cannot just say. Let's just do material logic, uh, discard the formal logic. There's no need for us to choose between parity between formal logic and material logic or formal logic and informal logic for that matter. So I think if we are to revise the curriculum, uh, uh, PAP can initiate on the kind of, of uh, critical thinking or creative thinking that we can use. But I suggest that we use both because for general education, I'm not talking of the field majors, I'm not talking of the kind of logic in the graduate school, but at least for the general education, because this is actually what we, uh, what our students need. That's correct, even during the time of Aristotle, logic is considered an a tool, an organon, that's why it is considered an organon, and even the term organon was not uh, Aristotelian, it came from the medieval philosopher. So it's a tool. And so we use it really as a tool so that the students would be able to be guided because logic is an art. It guides us in correct reasoning. And so if we lose it, um, uh, students would just be uh, uh, thinking in any way without a certain rigor. And so there's still really a need that it be combined the, for, the, the formal and the informal or the critical and the creative in order for the students to find logic something meaningful. Now, how about you, Sir Gerald? What's the content of the syllabus? A basic uh, logic course. Uh, I will not really be re revising it much, you know? Mm. Uh, 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 perhaps there is just a need to highlight you know, certain aspects of it. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the appreciation part, uh, critical thinking, uh, the role of history, the importance of history. And at the same time, you know, we need to perhaps uh, understand the role of uh, the, uh, technical, the technical part, you know, the significance of the technical part of, of, of logic. You know? mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I believe that uh, it's, it also helps you know, in, uh, well, uh, uh, sharpening our mental faculties. You know? uh, I think that uh, by performing those uh, kind of exercises, you know, then we are able to sharpen our minds. You know? uh, and that in itself is already uh, an important contribution. You know? uh, of course, if we keep on asking for the uh, practical relevance, you know, uh, we might actually even miss the point, no? Uh, uh, just like in the case of mathematics, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we, we make a distinction between uh, uh, pure mathematics and the other more practical aspects of mathematics. I believe that many mathematicians you know, study uh, mathematics or many students study, take up mathematics, you know, because uh, uh, they want to uh, be able to get good jobs you know, and the likes, you know? Uh, they want to be able to answer practical questions uh, and the likes, you know. But uh, there is also uh, a part of mathematics which is known as pure mathematics. And I think logic is closer to that, you know. You don't do it for any practical uh, purpose, you know. Uh, it it, it uh, arises out of the pure desire for understanding, you know. Uh, uh, well, maybe there is that science part uh, about formal logic, but uh, when we do uh, uh, mental gymnastics, as it were, 
sharpening our minds, you know, and maybe we can appreciate that better as we grow older, you know, uh, 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 and, and I appreciate that very much when, uh, for example, I, I became uh, a director of the Office of Admissions, you know, uh, I was not a, a data scientist, I was not a mathematician, I mean, uh, by profession, you no, know? uh, I was not a statistician, I was not a psychologist, nevertheless, uh, I believe I was able to make uh, my contributions you know, to that particular office. You know? uh, and it's because of my training in, in logic, mathematical logic, uh, specifically. You know? uh, so uh, uh, it's something that contributes to the development you know, mm. of uh, uh, the mind, as it were, the philosopher. Uh, and uh, 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 looking for its uh, more practical uh, uh, aspects, you know, we just might uh, uh, miss uh, its uh, importance, you know. I, 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 I remember uh, the textbook that we used, you know, before, you know, when I was still a student, you know, in Philosophy 11, uh, mm. the logic course, you know. Uh, it starts with that story about uh, somebody asking for a justification of logic. And I think that's what our leaders are asking from us. Mm. Justify logic. Uh -huh. No, but how can you justify logic? No, I mean, you just need to point out that by asking that question, that person already sees the importance of logic. No, by asking for a justification, <laughs> there is no need to answer that question. The raising of the question itself already shows no, that this person knows or appreciates mm -hmm. the understanding of logic. We only need to point that out. Maybe uh, uh, he doesn't know it, he's not aware of it. I think. Uh, a lot of us are like that. We think logically without us being aware of it. You know? <laughs> and I saw that uh, in the uh, statement you know, uh, in, during the inauguration of this World Logic Day. Mm -hmm. you know? A lot of us think logically most of the time, but we are not aware of it. So maybe uh, uh, we just need uh, to be, uh, uh, we just need to make the students aware of that. You know? That uh, all along they are actually using uh, modus tollens, you know, disjunctive syllogism without <laughs> them being aware of it, you know. Uh, they're uh, distributing uh, the middle and the likes, you know, without them being aware of it. Okay, so let's proceed to our Q&A portion. Uh, let's start with a question from the Q&A box from Augusto Orlindo Bartolome. So it seems <laughs> that logic is losing prominence and there is an effort to remove it as a separate subject in gen ed or general education because the product is not immediately seen uh, compared to other courses the direct outputs like hospitality management or tourism so in your opinion is this way of thinking of a product of the present curriculum that is based on outcomes the outcomes based education is this a good way of thinking about education so what do you think for any of the panelists? Um, I was also about to comment on that, no, on the outcomes-based education. Again, uh, there might be some chat again, <laughs> <laughs> officials <laughs> listening to us. Uh, again, personally, there might be something wrong also with our OBE because it's a process of uh, telling our students what to learn, what to achieve, what to think, and what not to think. No, uh, It's constricting. Um, so I think um, there should really be a review of the kind of education that we are having because we might not really getting the meat of uh, the kind of education that we want to give our students. So um, when we don't allow our students to find meaning in what they're doing, uh, things don't make sense. And therefore, um, if we constrict them, if we limit them, uh, they might not appreciate life because uh, logic uh, should permeate in all our being. And if we fail to do that, uh, we fail as professors. Okay, thanks, Mom Alma. Uh, this is for Sir Gerald. Since we are following OBE, again, the outcomes-based education, the ideal is to develop a syllabus relative to the program outcomes of a certain course. 
Now, if this is the case, then the content would really be different in each program. For instance, engineering and IT may take more of modern logic than traditional health sciences may focus more on induction than deduction. So how would you have a general education logic if that's the case? Uh, well, there, there is really no uh, conflict you know, between traditional logic you know, and uh, modern symbolic logic. You know? I think uh, that is something that's quite clear you know, when we re-examine you know, uh, traditional logic, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the logic of Aristotle. Uh, there is really no conflict, I guess. You know? And uh, uh, if uh, we design a course for uh, engineers or mathematicians, then uh, uh, there will be uh, aspects of traditional logic there also, no? Mm -hmm. uh, albeit uh, uh, maybe expressed uh, in more uh, in a more formal manner in a language that is uh, more, I mean, uh, familiar maybe to the students of engineering and uh, mathematics, you know? Mm -hmm. Because I think uh, because of their training uh, from uh, uh, grade school uh, uh, and uh, high school, you know. Uh, they're already quite comfortable with the way uh, of thinking using symbols, uh, equations, and the likes, you know, that is those who take up uh, mathematics you know, and engineering. You know? uh -huh. uh, and precisely, I think they, they take up these subjects you know, because uh, they were very uh, good at uh, th that kind of thinking. You know? uh, so uh, again, uh, uh, th there is no conflict. You know? and, uh, we think of logic as a tool. Yes, it's a tool for mathematicians. It's a tool for engineers. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, so uh, it's unavoidable that we include the uh, logic portions there. You know? uh, uh, but uh, is this really the kind of logic uh, that we want to uh, inculcate in a, well, a, a philosopher? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, somebody, let's say, following a, a more liberal education no, uh, I would just like to make that comment, you know, about uh, maybe the way we design courses nowadays, you know, uh, OBE and the likes, you know, uh, during the medieval uh, uh, ages, you know, I mean, when uh, uh, universities were uh, invented in the first place, you know, uh, uh, they designed the liberal education as the education for a free man, mm -hmm. no, uh, not somebody who is... Uh, uh, who's, who's, uh, uh, who is going to be a tradesman, a merchant, maybe an artisan, no? Mm -hmm. uh, who will follow a more vocational education, no? So maybe we should not uh, lose track of that, the idea of uh, liberal education and what its point is, no? Uh, it's an education for free men, no? Uh, but maybe nowadays, you know, uh, we don't really don't want that kind of education. I mean, at least you know, the, maybe the political leaders in the lines, you know, <laughs> you know, don't want that kind of uh, education. Why? Because a liberal mind is a dangerous mind. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, 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 because a, a liberal mind uh, does not just simply follow. No? Uh, so there, no? uh, regarding the relevance uh, of uh, of, of, of logic, I think I've already answered that previously. Yeah, thanks, Sir Gerald. Here's something from Jerry Tomoteo. So it's from Facebook. Uh, it is mentioned earlier that there are different tools of logic. So you have propositional logic, uh, traditional logic. So is it right to think that we need to think and plan what kind of logic to teach? So what kind of logic should we teach, given that you have different types of logic or tools of logic available? Mom Alma. Um, like what I said before, no, well, it depends on the kind of uh, thinking we want to develop among our students. Uh, my position has always been that we combine both formal, informal, uh, um, uh, uh, traditional, propositional, uh, substantive, uh, pedagogical, syntax, and semantics, all of this in combination, as long as uh, our students might find sense in what we're teaching them. Because they might say, um, yes, uh, we strictly follow the formal proof of validity, but 
uh, what then? They might ask, what then? We might have the skeleton, but if we miss the substance, they might not see the uh, the utility, the relevance of, uh, of of teaching the subject. So um, I, I will not propose the kind of logic, but I will propose that it be a kind of creative thinking. Uh, I, I um, by analogy, I would say you no. Know, the critical thinking, because it's more of you against that. Um, uh, this is a good venue for that kind of discussion. And then the creative is something that is in itself creative. It might even be an inductive reasoning no? that is uh, uh, truth seeking rather than truth preserving. Because um, we always associate logic as a kind of a deductive argument that is truth preserving it's already there you can't go wrong as long as you follow the rules because there are laws of inference but if we allow our students to move out of the box and seek other venues uh they might be able to be surprised on what they are able to find uh which is contrary to the obe because it limits also the competencies no so uh I'm not proposing any kind of particular logic, but I'm proposing that it be thinking. Um, if I may also say, it, you know, it's possible to be logical without thinking. Okay, uh, that's interesting. I hope it will sink in. <laughs> uh, that's an interesting point. You could have logic without thinking. Uh, so I think John Paul Ong's question was also answered because his question is about what will be the appearance of the of logic in the curriculum let's have another question from uh, john paul Ong. he has a question this is coming from fb again uh, for mom alma if that is the case for a catholic institution like in ours what will you recommend especially everybody will appreciate the art of logic so the art aspect of logic what would you I recommend. If, if we define logic as an art, then let it be creative. <laughs> okay, so that's there's a follow up question about the creative aspect here. Oh, by the way, we have viewers from Australia. Hello. So there is a question regarding for Mom Alma again. So, what is creative, the creative view of logic? Can you expound on this one? Yes, uh, thank you for that question, because that also allow that will also allow me to say something about the different methods that we use in creative uh, thinking. Um, we actually use the three um, uh, models of argumentation in creative uh, thinking. Uh, I know most of you would be familiar with the uh, Tolmin, with Red, and Frisco. Uh, but I usually use the Tolmin method by Stephen Tolmin on that. You have your uh, claim, you have your warrant, backing, uh, um, reason. You know, it may not follow the formal proof of validity, but still uh, would lead us to an argument that may be qualified as valid or even more valid no, than the formal proof of the, 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 the Tulmin method or even the, what is this, the, um, the Four Lenses of Innovation by uh, Rowan Gibson. You know, when we teach this, the Four Lenses of Innovation, we tell our students that this would be the different innovative uh, uh, steps that we can use. And there is also like uh, uh, rigidity in it because you have to follow steps. So, and they, they would say, hey, this is the first time we heard about this. And that developed our kind of thinking. And, you know, when you hear that from our students, uh, you would feel that hey there's value in teaching creative thinking really no so there you can have the the um um the four lenses of innovation uh creative problem solving and then the the very in thing now is the design thinking 
Uh, the design thinking is what we ask is where we ask our students to come up with an innovative project, put, uh, putting all together all the concepts in logic that they studied and they come up with a unique idea that sells. So in the end, we are not just think, asking them to think logically, we're asking them also to be uh, incubators uh, because they design project that would be uh, valuable to society using all the different kinds of uh, uh, frameworks that they have learned in creative and critical thinking. Yeah, thanks, Mom. Um, uh, so you, you're thinking about creative thinking here in terms of the tool main model and the design thinking model. Uh, that's interesting. So here's something from the Q&A box. So it seems we're too late, the hero, when we have no more logic in our curriculum. So what is our move? so that we could bring back logic in the curriculum? I think that's a question for everyone here, but do you have any thoughts? I, I, Dr. JJ, I think it's not yet late, no? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's not yet late because you're meant for critical thinking if only we can be innovative mm -hmm. because there are only 24 units of GE, no? And there are still nine units um, leeway where you can, uh, include this kind of uh, thinking. And uh, we appreciate universities and colleges that make use of this uh, innovative strategy to develop in our students uh, this creative and critical thinking. And if I may also say, you know, Dr. JJ, there's also one university that makes use of big history. Uh, that's it, at Holy Angel University, big history that covers and students are making use of uh, of critical and creative thinking. Th that creative, that kind of creativity, uh, we should include in our curriculum. Okay, this is for Sir Gerald, coming from Joseph. Gerald has, uh, <laughs> uh, Sir Gerald from Joseph Ramis Ramsical. Is it possible for people such as DBS and boomers, quote and unquote? to be still capable of learning and adapting logic in terms of, of social media and particularly discussion? Well, maybe uh, 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 we can uh, try to do it the way uh, Socrates did it, no? Mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, Socratic dialectic, uh, uh, where we try to find some common ground and then uh, we start from there, no? Uh, and as I was saying earlier, no? Uh, Perhaps we need also to underscore this particular aspect of logic, logic as a dialectic, you know, uh, the need for discussion, uh, uh, the need for the exchange of ideas, you know, uh, because if we were to uh, simply, uh, well, restrict ourselves to the analysis of arguments, just like the presentation of the informal fallacies, the fallacies, whether formal or informal, uh, you see, the way I think about this uh, informal fallacies is not that they're, they're really invalid arguments, but rather that they are uh, dialectic stoppers. You know? When somebody presents an ad hominem argument, for example, that means that that person is not willing anymore you not know, to discuss. You no, know? that person is not willing to debate anymore. You no, know? so maybe, uh, yes, we can point out that uh, uh, he or she is uh, committing a fallacy, uh, making uh, a bad argument, but at the same time, you know, we need to uh, try to find a common ground you know, so that we can uh, continue the discussion. You know? uh, so uh, uh, that would be uh, my answer to that particular question. Try to find the common ground. You know? uh, and uh, 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 no person is uh, in a way beyond the salvation as it were. Uh, I'm sure that uh, That's funny. Uh, by trying to understand these people, we will be able to understand the, you know, their motivations, mm. and uh, that's where we make our starting point. Okay, so this is for both of you. There is a good question from Mary Jane Mendoza, from, again, from the Facebook uh, chat. Now, logic helps you to organize your thoughts with the help of logical rules, but it does not exclude those who have no formal training in logic not to be logical or organized in their thoughts as well. But logic definitely will enhance the reasoning skills, which is often of use by those who have mastered the art of reasoning. I think the question here is, learning logic also uh, 
would give you the tools to manipulate other people. Is that the case here? Well, we have likened logic as a tool to, to a tool. It's like a knife. And uh, like what uh, has been said so many times about the knife, it can be used you know, to save a life or it can also be used to kill. You no, know? uh, So logic can also be used in that way. You no, know? uh, Well, in the history of philosophy, we go back you know, to the sophists. You know, uh, Plato uh, criticized them precisely because uh, he said you know, that uh, they made uh, uh, the uh, uh, weak argument uh, strong and the strong argument weak. You know? So I think uh, logic can also be uh, uh, well, uh, used in that way, you know, and uh, of course it's, uh, it, it isn't being used in the right way, you know. So that's why uh, I insist on, uh, well, the dialectical aspect of it, you no, know? uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, dig deeper, as it were, so that we can find uh, common grounds, you know, and they will themselves uh, provide the, new, the rules, you know, that they will be uh, following in their way of thinking. And, uh, 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 we only need to show another that these rules are consistent. How about you, Ma'am Alma? The, the question is whether you could use logic to manipulate other people in malevolent ways. You know, Dr. JJ, there's so much irrationality going on now in our world, no? and uh, people don't know anymore how to distinguish good from bad uh, reasoning. And I think the telos of logic is really good reasoning. It has been defined as the art of good reasoning. And so when we intend to manipulate, uh, which you know the sophists did back then in order to win debates, I think that is not really uh, the kind of logic that we want to teach our students. Um, never is logic meant to manipulate. Um, never it is meant to... Um, uh, 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 humiliate uh, one another, uh, pretending that we have uh, we have the truth and others don't know. The kind of logic that we really want to inculcate and teach our students is that which will lead us to good reasoning. That's why the practicality of logic is that we would be able to answer what ought to be done and what sound argument is. Okay, so here's another question. From, uh, from one of the panelists here, Kathleen Joy Alvarez Abarejo. Good morning, everyone. May I ask the speakers, so the discussion touched on improving the teaching of logic courses. Can you share some of the difficulties you encountered in teaching logic in online platforms, given the kind of setup that we have nowadays? So how do you handle online teaching of logic? Sir Gerald. Well, the main difficulty is the internet connection, you know, uh, uh, and uh, maybe uh, the number of uh, students, you know. I think one uh, uh, a very good way of uh, teaching logic online would be uh, in a tutorial manner, you know, maybe one-on-one -on -one or maybe as few students as possible, you know, so that you can also guide them if they uh, uh, commit some mistakes, you know. So the problem here really is that uh, 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 with this kind of setup, it is really difficult to see uh, how the students uh, are doing it. You know, unlike when you are inside a classroom, you can take a peek at uh, what they are doing, especially when they are given some problems, you know, uh, to to solve. Uh, because uh, a teacher can learn uh, not only from the right answers but from the wrong answers. You know, you can diagnose, as it were, uh, what is wrong. Uh, what 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 kind of mistakes are being done by students, you know, and maybe uh, what kind of rules they are following uh, uh, and and the like, you know, and uh, in this kind of setup, uh, online learning, uh, it's more difficult to uh, uh, to see that, you no, know? uh, so you really have to devote more time uh, uh, to that, you know, but. Uh, of course, the, the students themselves are facing their own difficulties, not only with uh, the learning staff. You know, that's why I think they are unable to devote also uh, time you know, uh, to really uh, 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 learn more you know, 
uh, from, from, from the teacher. Uh, so another is that the question and answer part is sometimes, uh, yeah, uh, it's no longer there, you know, or there, there's no longer time for that. You know, or maybe students are more hesitant you know, to raise questions you know, uh, uh, during this uh, online setup. You know? So we're trying to deal with it, of course. Uh, 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 but uh, 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 at the same time, you know, uh, I, can, I, I can see the, some students uh, succeeding uh, in in that kind of uh, in that kind of setup. Okay, how about you, Mama Alma? So, how do you teach Let me project? Yeah. Yes, Mama Alma. Okay, yes, yeah. Um, in a trauma-induced critical pedagogy that we have now, since we're doing online teaching, I think creativity really comes into the picture. Uh, it, it's really needed. You know, I learned that uh, some people, some students are creative, others are productive. Uh, our students and even our professors are either creative or productive. And when we notice, what we notice is that uh, people who are creative thinkers become less productive. And when people are productive, they become less creative. And so productive people accomplish their tasks in a systematic way because they're really productive, no? And they follow the formal logic, whatever kind of formal probability that they follow, they are, they are productive. They make steady and measurable progress. They make effective use of time. And our students submit to their Dropbox. That's what we call uh, uh, the, uh, the Dropbox where students submit all their assignments even before the deadline. But you know, creative people and even creative creative people, uh, students and professors alike, need some time and space. And these are the people who procrastinate uh, and it's hard for them to systematize things. It's hard for them to follow certain rules because they're really creative and it takes a while for them to get the right mix of skills and content. But you know, when they do, these creative people, when they come up with their insights, you'll find out they'll submit the best uh, answers only if you give them enough time. And so even with professors no, uh, who are really creative thinkers, we cannot give them the KRAs or the KPIs because they don't work that way. And it's the same thing with our students. Just allow them to think. Uh, if we give all all the things that they will be submitting from day one, they would know that in the end, this is what they're going to do. Uh, if, the, if our students are creative, give them time to come up with novel ideas and you'll find out what kind of uh, papers they would have really insightful. And that's what I discovered in online teaching. And uh, if I may say, no, I'm really enjoying the online teaching right now because I'm discovering more students who are really creative and critical thinkers. And even professors that are really creative and critical for that matter. Okay, I, I like the, the point about, you know, you could have, be, you could be creative uh, in teaching your courses via online and you will discover that some students like this kind of environment, the online environment. But here's a follow up question to that by Marielle Zosa. So we are considering about critical thinking and creative thinking. How about care thinking? So he, she gave a background. So Care thinking is we need to be devoted to the emotional aspect of thinking as well. So how do we do that? How do we incorporate that in logic education? Any thoughts, Sir Gerald? Uh, incorporating the... Uh, uh, care emotions. thinking, yeah, care thinking. Uh, uh, is that uh, the way uh, uh, we should understand you know, yung care thinking? You know, uh, yeah. Uh, taking into consideration the emotions of the students you know mm -hmm. well of course uh, 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 one way of uh, dealing with that would be by uh, uh, prior to maybe uh, introducing you know the techniques you know that uh, we employ in logic would be to try to understand you know the concerns you know of uh, students you know uh, so that uh, we would be able to uh, 
address better you know, their concerns you know, and maybe their emotions you know, uh, towards uh, this particular subject matter. You know? uh, well, of course, there is that thinking you know, that logic is, uh, uh, in a way, uh, like mathematics, somewhat cold. You know? uh, in that uh, it does not uh, make any, uh, uh, it does not allow for any room for emotions. <laughs> but I think uh, from a more pedagogical aspect, yes, uh, we can uh, uh, incorporate that you know, by becoming more attentive you know, to the needs of uh, students, especially during this time. You know, uh, uh, I started my classes by telling my students you know, that maybe the real pandemic here is not really the disease. You know, because uh, if we go by the etymology of the term, uh, pandemic, you know, uh, in Greek, you know, it's something that affects all human, all, all, all persons. And what is that? It's not really the disease. It's the fear, you no, know? uh, fear of the disease, you know, and uh, uh, that's something, you know, that I think affects, uh, I mean, going back, you know, to the earlier question, you know, about online learning, uh, that is uh, something that affects uh, all the students, you know, uh, and uh, so it makes uh, online teaching uh, more difficult. Online teaching would be very different, I guess, without uh, without that, you know, without the pandemic. You no, know? uh, I mean, under normal circumstances, we can have yes, online learning uh, without that element of fear uh, uh, on the part of the students. You know, so uh, uh, by taking that by taking that into account, you know, in the teaching maybe of our courses, uh, particularly in logic, then. Uh, Maybe we, we, we will be able to uh, uh, address you know, uh, the, these issues you know, of, of, of the students. Oh, thanks, Sir Gerald. How about Mom Alma? Let's think about it in terms of does emotion have anything to do with our thinking, logical thinking? Can we have yeah. kind of care? Um, Dr. JJ. Yeah. Yeah. I'm currently working on a paper, Narrativizing Trauma and Hope Among Students and Faculty Members. Uh, but it's yet to be approved by my chair, no? Professor Dino. Sana ma-approve na. Okay. Um, it's about um, hearing and listening to our students who are suffering from trauma. Not the trauma that we know of, but the kind of trauma that shocks them. And it's not only the students and the professors, uh, not only the students, but the professors as well that are uh, currently experiencing trauma. So uh, while we're teaching logic, while we're teaching creative and critical thinking, uh, could this be devoid of emotion? We can separate that, no? that the kind of care that we have to give our students and the, and the rigor by which we study, by which we teach our subjects. So while I'm teaching, while I care for you, I would tell my students, you still have to do the task. So it's not setting aside emotions, but uh, uh, considering it as well. But in the process, you help the student cope with the, with the task, but they would feel that you still care. Um, and then eventually, um, you, you would you would tell them that despite all this, no, despite the pandemic, there's still hope, and you'll find it there in the in the papers that they turn in. Like, how do you make sense of this pandemic? Um, uh, give a critical evaluation of the situation, and when you read their papers, beautiful essays from the student, they would see you would see, you know, that um, it's not just the stress that they are focusing on they would say that we are so resilient and so responsible and from there uh yes you you'd say everything still makes sense okay so here's from gian australia is being liberal logical doesn't logic constrict liberality what do you think sir gerald Well, uh, from the perspective of uh, a specific uh, system of logic, uh, then we can say that it's not liberal, no? Uh, in that uh, uh, you are directed towards certain channels of thinking. No? You cannot help but think in a certain way. Like for example, when you construct a formal proof of validity, no, there is only one answer, uh, or at least uh, 
uh, there is a right answer and uh, you have to follow that and so in that particular case uh, you are not uh, you are not free you know but at the same time you know uh, we need to think you know uh, uh, that uh, there are other ways you know of uh, maybe dealing with this with these problems you know and uh, that is where creativity comes in you know uh, so that uh, yes you know uh, uh, you can be liberal at the same time you know uh, you can come up with a formal system of logic but the way you interpret it you no know, the semantics that you can provide for it uh, for example uh, just like in the case of modern logic, uh, 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 we've been through this, right? You know, uh, I mean, it can be interpreted in so many ways. You know, you can come up with uh, creative ways of uh, dealing with them. You no, know? uh, so uh, there is no incompatibility there. You no, know? uh, uh, you can be logical and at the same time liberal. Uh, because our semantic interpretations you know, of the formal systems you know, uh, can be anything you like, you know, uh, as long as they are consistent. You know? uh -huh. Of course, consistency is not constraining. Uh, you can write uh, a work of fiction, uh, which is very much creative, but perfectly logical in that sense. How about you, Doc Alma? Does logic constrain um, liberal? Yeah, I say something. Dr. JJ, yeah. Uh, thanks for Gian Estrella. No, G, um, Gian Estrella is one of my students in the seminary, okay? And I hope that he learned uh, something logical in what I taught him, okay? Um, you know, uh, like what uh, Dr. Gerald mentioned on now, uh, they're compatible. Uh, we cannot choose one over the other because it's possible that they can play complementary roles. I prefer um, a formal synergy between the two uh, so that when you are liberal, you can also be logical. When you're logical, you can also be liberal. It's not choosing one over the other, but uh, one may include the other. Okay, thanks, Doc Alma. Uh, here's something for Sir Gerald regarding the creativity as well from Ron Victor Sarmiento. So uh, formal logic is also able to foster not just cre critical thinking, but creative thinking, as we have said. For example, natural deduction, you could have a kind of proof tree or some other kind of thinking about things in terms of Sudoku solving or game-like scenarios. So do you think that we should involve more game-like activities in our programs in order to foster a more intuitive understanding of logical rules? What do you think, Sir Gerald? Uh, more of it, uh, maybe yes. You know, if there is time for it, you know, uh, and that's how uh, we have. Uh, I have handled, you know, my uh, basic logic courses, uh, and yes, Sudoku puzzles. Uh, we start with puzzles. We start with Sudoku puzzles. Uh, I hope that uh, I can. Uh, we can incorporate. I think that's what. Uh, uh, um, Mr. Uh, Sarmiento, is that it? Uh, uh, he's talking about, you know, uh, he was my student in intermediate logic and precisely those are the things that we discussed. <laughs> uh, in the case of the truth tree method, uh, well, maybe there is no room for creativity there. Uh, uh, what he's saying is that uh, in the case of the method of formal proof, there is more creativity there. Uh -huh. well, yeah, maybe to a certain extent, I can agree with that, you know. And uh, so maybe, yes, we can incorporate more uh, 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 examples like that, you know. And as I've said, you know, I usually start my logic courses with things like that, you know, because I think that's uh, uh, the interest also of the students. Okay, I think we only have time for one last question. Davis here. Uh, one last question from let's have Darius Galorpo from from the Facebook chat. I think there are some of the many problems that we have here in the Philippines that really adversely affect the beauty and importance of studying and teaching logic. 
First, there are those who teach logic who come from other disciplines too far from philosophy. Second, there are many who teach logic not in the way that it must be taught instead of teaching it in order to develop the student's critical thinking ability. So he's more concerned about the teachers teaching logic. So how do we address this problem? So, Why do I find that a very difficult question? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it, it's a struggle. It's a struggle no, that uh, uh, there might really be some, some professors that may not be able to teach logic the way it should be taught. But of course, who we are, who are we to say this is the kind of uh, a position they have to have in teaching logic? Uh, it's a struggle. Well, uh, we just want to believe that teaching logic, and I think that uh, we continue training uh, some junior professors and perhaps even the senior professors who may have not updated themselves for a long while. So, yeah. So. Uh, a webinar may be a useful method in updating our logical skills in order to best serve our students. Okay, so final thoughts. How, what is logic education in the Philippines and what's the future of logic in the Philippines? Sir Gerald. Hmm. Well, we just need to uh, realize you know, that uh, uh, uh all this all these concerns you know about logic from the higher ups you know is something that is constantly changing uh we expect that maybe in the next uh in the next few years you know uh you have a different uh, set of leaders there you know uh, uh maybe uh, somebody might be uh more inclined you know, towards uh, logic you no know? uh so we just need to uh continue you no know? uh uh, keep on doing what we have been doing, uh, maybe improving uh, what we have been doing, uh, and then trying to make uh, our students uh, appreciate you know, uh, uh, the, the importance of logic uh, and hope that uh, 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 sooner or later, uh, these students of ours will become our leaders, no? And then uh, uh, <laughs> they will be, uh, they might, uh, they might include logic back, you know, into the curriculum, and things like that, no? So we just keep on, we just keep on uh, uh, doing what we have been doing and improving, no? Okay, Doc Alba, uh, Thank you. what is logic in the Philippines, logic education in the Philippines, and how do we move forward? Um, Dr. JJ, no, um, we all want to live in a world that is logical uh, because there's so much irrationality in the world now and we know where it is coming from or better yet from whom it is coming. So we can count on so few people to go that hard way with us. And when logic gets offered again in another revision of the new general education uh, curriculum in the Philippines. We hope that we teach it the way it should be taught, or we might put to waste what we traded part of our soul for. And uh, maybe uh, um, to end on, let us not allow the madness of deep logical thinking to stop uh, because I think that's the only remedy for this irrational world. Okay, so thanks Doc Alma, thanks Sir Gerald for your wonderful participation in this roundtable discussion. I'll turn you over to Alex. Thank you.